Hello everyone, it's Kylie Fleek and I am here with Mum. My mother, who is your name is? Joe. <laughs> Mama Fleek. <laughs> in today's video, my mum is visiting Auckland, so I thought I'd kidnap her, trap her in my hot little studio and film a YouTube video. In this video, I'm gonna be asking my mum some questions. I put a question box up on my Instagram story the other day, and you guys had shit tons of questions for her. We have everything of surface level questions right down to the nitty gritty shit. So this is my mum. If you would like to learn more about her, I don't know, more about how she raised me, how she views life, and you'll probably even learn a lot more about me, then of course, keep watching this video. Apologies for my appearance, I just had a facial so I can't put any makeup on. But I thought my mum was coming to visit me, so now I forced her to do a YouTube video with me. <laughs> now, you guys have seen my mum before. You fucking really enjoyed her reel. You, how many likes did it get? Heaps. 18,000 likes on her face? It freaked her out. But <laughs> you just don't know much about my mum and it's not really my place to tell you about her. So I've dragged her in and I put a little question box on my Instagram story and we've got a bunch of questions here. But I'm gonna be doing her makeup. She doesn't like heavy makeup. So we're gonna be doing a bit of a natural glam while you get to know my mum. So do you wanna start with what's your name and where you're from? <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Jo and I'm from Gisborne. <laughs> This is oh, mum's quiet. first time like talking, talking <laughs> on the camera. So what do you do for work? So, uh, I'm a hairdresser. So we have a family business. So my mum's owned it for 43 years and I've been back there for 18 years now. What got you into hairdressing? Was it Nana? Uh, uh, probably. Well, I grew up with it. So I was didn't want to be a hairdresser. But I became a hairdresser. What did but you I guess be? that's because what I always knew. I either wanted to be air hostess or a police officer. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, I couldn't because of my back for my operation. Well, that's just open to question it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your back? What happened to my back? I've yep. got a disease in my back, so I had to have surgery where it causes the disc to slip. Does that run in the family? Well, I hope not. Well, you've got... <laughs> well, I've got well, something. Got... I know, but when we got your back done, though, it, it wasn't the same as mine, which yeah. was good. Yeah. Does Kyle share his makeup with you? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, <probably not. laughs> if I want something, you don't get it. <laughs> and you've got two trolleys full. Nah. <laughs> don't lie. <laughs> so people are wondering, because I'm, I'm obviously very heavily into makeup. Are you? No. <laughs> Why I'm got to be the most laziest person you can think of with makeup. Because people think it's interesting that you, you, you're you the hairdresser and I'm the makeup artist and they've wanted to know well, if cool. I learned anything from you. With makeup? Yeah. Hell no. <laughs> I did use You to teach me how to use makeup. <laughs> I did use to steal her makeup though. The 12 year old makeup that was at the bottom of her bag. That was all I had to choose from. Okay, now you have a husband, aka my father. Do you want to quickly introduce him? So that's Lee Dathia. So me and Lee have been together for 25 years, I think. No. Maybe 26, something like that. And we've been married for 10 years. Well, that leads me into my question is how did you and dad meet? How did me and dad meet? And where? So in Gisborne, mm -hmm. just through friends and friends and through Tracy, my sister. But so, yeah, I didn't really like your dad at first. <laughs> <laughs> Took me about three or four years. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. What was the first year of your relationship like with dad? Um, I'll just say young. Young? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Now someone's asking, what was your childhood like? That's a big question, so you can think about it. I loved my childhood. The mm -hmm. reason why, well, I had a mum and a dad, mm -hmm. and my and mum and dad are still together. Mm -hmm. But also, I got brought up on my mum's side of the family from our Manitouke, which I had my, I didn't have a grandmother, but I had a great grandmother, and my grandmother's sister, Nanny Ree, was my nanny. Mm -hmm. So we got brought up on a, well, brought up with being around Māori, Mm -hmm. and the marae, mm -hmm. but also my grandfather as well, which our family land is still all out there, home. Mm -hmm. um, we got brought up with him as well, which granddad's a Pākehā, 
Um, so we had the diverse of both, and just the memories when we were kids at Manitou, like the Swing Bridge, and well, that was my with cousins. That was leading into my next question. What is one or some of your favourite childhood memories? Is being out at Manitouki yeah. and on the Marae and the Swing Bridge and being at Fat Nannies and Nanny Blossoms. And Did you say Fat called Nanny? Them. We called Nanny Re Fat Nanny. Oh. Because we never had, never had a nanny. She was our nanny. Yeah. Okay, so the next question is about me. Um, It's what was the day Kyle was born like? Me. <laughs> this is a really hard question to explain. I know what I'm thinking, but I can't say it but it was emotional it was amazing it was something i said that i'll never do again (laughs) (laughs) and then i have two more after that (laughs) so yeah first time pregnancy is it's something that's unexplainable but your first always teaches you how to love yeah yeah did you want kids originally before you had me no i didn't my sister did Mm. but and i didn't but so, then my sister's got none and I've got three. So what was the plan if you didn't want children? What 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 did you see for yourself in life? Probably more career orientated, really. Mm. I never actually really thought about it, really. So what was like one of the scariest moments of motherhood for you? To making sure that you're doing a good job as being a mother and hopefully you're teaching them the right things in life. Did any do you think anybody taught you how to do that or did you take inspiration from certain people well i always say it takes a village to raise a child Mm -hmm. and i I believe in that so i had a good mum and a good dad and and still to this day they help me bring up my children yeah and my kids are lucky because they get to learn that side of you know the old school ways with their grandparents and their beliefs oh this one's Less related to family, but it is, um, what is one thing you want to do before you die if you could only choose one? Probably sounds really dumb, but one thing that I want to do before I die is go to New York. Why? Because I just want to go to New York. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to do the sex in the city thing. Pretty dresses, high heel shoes, pretty handbags, <laughs> drinking champagne and flash cocktails. <laughs> oh, this, okay, this is a mean one. Um, what is one piece of advice that you could give to your younger self? To live life to the fullest and mm-hmm. enjoy every bit of it. Because you only get one chance of mm. doing what you want to do. And don't take life so seriously. I do that. Yeah, I used to be like that. I, I still do. Well, there are a few... Well, there's probably more than a few personality traits that me and you share. Mm. Should we bounce back and forth about what we... Stubbornness. <laughs> That's the first big one. I think I have your... Well, at least you appear to have tough skin. Yeah. I think I got that from you. Yeah. Where did that come from, your tough skin? Do you think you were born with it or... Came from my mum. Oh, yeah? Came from Nana. She's tough, that lady. <laughs> <laughs> so you. So I've got it from you and you've got it from Nan. I think so. Okay. I think I've got... How do I put it? I think I've got your heart as well. It's quite reserved for a, a, only a very small amount of people yeah and yeah. everyone else can get fucked because that's how we both think and i know that <laughs> <laughs> we're not mean people no just... no no but i think the thing is that we we don't stand for disrespect no. you stand up for what you believe in yeah yeah and it's a good thing to have too what's one thing that you would change about me if you could for better or for worse whatever. for you to stop being such a perfectionist <laughs> in yourself <laughs> That's one thing I'd like to change about you. I think that's actually a good one. Yeah. I wonder where I get that from. Yeah. Oh, you actually probably get that from Dad. If, yeah, maybe actually. Dad is a perfectionist. Yeah. When it comes to work, work ethics. Yeah. 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 What is one piece of advice that you would give to new mothers? That's a mean question. That is. Good things take time. It's hard being a new mum of learning. And... Never doubt yourself, really, because it's a learning curve, mm. and it gets better in time. But yeah, and stay strong. When you were raising your children, did you have any kind of values as a parent that you swore to stick to? Is to make a change. Not saying my childhood was bad because it was an awesome childhood, but don't do what my parents did. 
and nothing was bad. It's just that I want to break the cycle of that. Did do you think you've achieved that? Yep. Mm -hmm. I have. Going back to when I still lived in the house, mm -hmm. as a whole experience, what was it like having to raise three fucking boys <laughs> in a little house? Well, I don't know any different. Yeah. So it is what it is, really. Yeah. What was one or some of your hardest moments as we started to grow up? Being all different, mm -hmm. as well as working, mm -hmm. as well as all the activities and dealing with different personalities, really. Yeah. Because we're so different, did you find that we needed different methods of parenting? Yeah, absolutely. And that's another learning curve in itself. You just got to learn and... Hope for the best, really. What do you think is one of the most important responsibilities of a parent? The most important is showing your child love. To me, that is, anyway. What is? What do you think yeah, that yeah. means, to show a child love? Just love, affection, always being there. Um, having those conversations, yeah. you know. Uh, talking, because at the end of the day, the child never asks to be brought into the world. And knowing that your child is always going to have their mum or their dad or grandparents to have their back. So that's the biggest one for me. What are either one or a few moments in your life where you've learned a big, big lesson? Going back to speaking on trust, I think one of a moment where I learned a lot was I did something, something behind your back, <laughs> something, but it was bad. Um, I was never really, like, scared of growlings when I was a kid. You know, like, getting told off or yelled at or anything, just because, I don't know, it didn't really faze me. But what I was worried about, or what did hit me the most, is when you would say, um, you broke our trust, or whatever. Um, and I think in that moment is when I was taught that it's, like, perfectly okay to, you know, have... You said before there's a fine line between a friendship and a parent, right. but, you know, it's important to keep that balance to be able to keep that trust. And yeah. it was in that, oh, it was that thing on Skype, wasn't it? I can't remember. Neither. But that was the moment I learned that I can tell my mum things and she won't, you know, flip out at me. Well, parents don't, you learn as a parent. You don't judge. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you yeah. don't judge your your children. Yeah. 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 Well, so I'm obviously... Like, let me get in the frame. I'm obviously not straight. So what was it like raising a child like me? Well, it was perfectly fine. It was normal. You just did what you had yeah. to do. There was no judging of what your child... As a mum, I knew right from the beginning. Yeah. You, you yeah. do as a mum. It's so hard to explain, but you know as a mum whether your child is gay or not. Mm. It, yeah. You know right from the beginning. Mm. So you were probably actually most one of the hardest, Kyle, because your mind was always on the go. So we always used to have mats with the alphabet on there and... You learnt how to spell and you learnt how to write, like at a young age. Mm. So you constantly needed attention all the time. Mm. But with activities, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because your brain was always constantly tucking. Yeah. So our lounge was a play centre, really. Yeah. Of yeah. your whole childhood. Yeah. Especially down in Palmerston North, when we lived down there for two years. Yeah. Our whole lounge and dining area was a play area, really. Yeah. But also, because you were my only child... You got all of that time with me. Mm. All the time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But as a mum, you know whether your child, whatever your child's sexuality is, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, I get asked all the time, what's your coming out story? Or what was my eureka moment of finding out that I'm different? I don't have an answer for it. I genuinely did not have one of those moments. Did you have a particular moment or a turning point that, made you realise, like, oh my god, like, my son is gay? No, because you kind of, you, you, I knew yeah. anyway when you were at such a young age. Yeah. yeah. I, I knew that. 
Yeah. I feel like I'm the same. I feel like I knew before I could even think. That's why I don't have yes a, yeah. a turning point. Um. Okay. Well, what was there any moments of struggle, or did were you ever scared at a point raising me because of who I was? No. Not in, not good. in a homophobic way. Yeah. Just in a like maybe yeah. scared for your child's safety in a certain moment. Oh, or, absolutely. Yeah. We were scared because. We didn't want you to get hurt, or we yeah. didn't want you to get bullied, yeah. or um, it was those things that scared us. Yeah. Not because of who you are, but because of what other people would do. Yeah. Because that is society. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Society, uh, it's, it's a cruel. Yeah. But see, it, like in that fact, with you being like that, then, you know, you've got other bits, like with your brothers, that you're too that you worry about because you don't want them to get hurt. Does that mm. make sense? Mm. So yeah. It's always yeah. a balance, whatever, yeah. whatever yeah. you're doing as, it is, as your babies. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So speaking of, you know, raising me or raising a gay, queer, whatever child, um, I know there'll be parents out there, you know, with the same feeling you had when I was little, or even with somebody like me now, someone having a gay child, do you have any advice for new parents or even just parents in general on how you think queer people should be raised in the kind of space they deserve. It's probably not about raising a queer child or gay child or whatever, bisexual, whatever child. You just bring them up. It's normal. Mm. Just Mm. bring them up your normal way. And making sure that they're not afraid to be who they are. Because, like, going back to those other questions, it's about giving your child love Mm. and no judgment. And you shouldn't really do that anyway as a parent. Well, I believe you shouldn't. Yeah. But there is no right or wrong of bringing them up. Yeah. Just bring them up how you... Yeah. Yeah, bring up kids. That's where I'm saying give... My my advice for new mums is just love. Yeah. 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 Okay, we've come to the end of this makeup look now. I'm going to spray her with some setting spray. And we just answered probably a bunch of heavy, heavy questions. So we're going to end on a light note. Oh, does it cover my crease? Yeah. <laughs> I got that on. <laughs> Don't do that on my face. Okay, so the final question for my mum. I said it was a light note, and it is, but you might need to think about it. What is, like, your life quote? Like, what is one quote that you've stuck by in positive moments, negative moments? Mine is everything happens for a reason. Um, What do I always message you all the time? Just be you. mm, mm. That is my quote. I've always said it, and I always say it to Kyle, too. Mm. Always. Just be you okay so i look like a fucking grease ball it is so hot in this room but this is the end of the video thank you to my mother for agreeing to (laughs) to be in it and answer some of those questions you know we kind of went over a lot um and i'm sure you've learned a lot about my mum and a lot about me um thank you for watching this video make sure of course to give my mum some love in the comments (laughs) because she had a good old time scrolling through the comments on her reel that got what was it again? 18,000 likes? Mean. Okay, well. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you all for watching. I hope you like this makeup look. It's nice and glowy, nice and natural and gorgeous. <laughs> and we're about to go um, get dinner and get some drinks. So there you go. Look stunning. The clothes. We're going to go to K-Rade to the gay bars tonight. <sighs> Too old. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, for the third time, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe down below. You can follow me on Instagram at Kylie Fleek, on TikTok at Kylie Fleek Makeup. But watch out on YouTube because I'm posting on YouTube shorts now. Um, And I guess I shall see you next Sunday at 5pm. Goodbye. Bye.